All right, so welcome to making Snapchat lenses for beginners. Uh, if you're wondering what I'm wearing on myself right now, this is called Snap Camera. So this is a new uh, software that Snapchat released besides just Snapchat, which people are probably familiar with. It actually changes your camera, so you can video chat while wearing a lens. You can also stream while wearing a lens. Um, everything that Whenever I record classes, I use OBS Studio, and that's typically what people use for streaming when they stream on Twitch and etc. So it's a really cool system. And yeah, all the lenses that you make, you can change them on the fly, and it actually changes your camera, and um, it creates a video output device. So it's called a Snap Virtual Camera. So then you can, you can plug that camera into anything you want. Um, so what I'm doing right here is I'm just going to decrease myself right here and then you're going to be seeing what I am doing on screen so the first thing that we want to do is we want to have Lens Studio installed and I'm just going to fire up Lens Studio you're going to be greeted with your recent projects if you have some and if you don't or even if you do you're going to have templates so Snapchat comes with a lot of really cool templates that is very easy to get started with when you're trying to do your first Lens Studio project. Um, in this instance, just to kind of show you, you know, what what this looks like, I'll just I'm just gonna open up one of these, like for example, sunglasses, just so you can see what a template looks like. So go ahead and open up sunglasses. Okay, and I'm gonna turn off my snap camera for now because I don't need this demon lens and. There we go. So this is the glasses template that they have. Now, this usually has a trigger that animates it, but it seems like they changed this tutorial. So in any case, you can see over here on the right, sometimes um, your video feed might not be your camera. It might be this like image preview. So you can actually switch between like a default person and your actual camera. So you can preview lenses live. And if you switch to image video mode over here, there's actually multiple people you can kind of choose from and see what it fits like on them. If you click video here, you can actually have like a video of, of a person and you can kind of see what the, what the lens looks like on them. So the glasses uh, template just comes with a few like simple like tweaks that you can change here like you can change the color of the frames of the of the glass you can change the yeah here's the color of the frames and etc so they have some easy easy to change things here to just kind of get you started with something now what we're going to do is we're actually going to start one completely from scratch and uh, so I can just kind of show you how simple it is to just make a lens by yourself and we're actually going to create our first interaction as well. So the first thing that I want you to do is just go to file and then new project up here in the top left and we're just going to start from the beginning and then you can just click discard. You don't need to save this. So now that we have this open, now you can either work with a default person or you can just work with the webcam. Either one is fine. I'm going to kind of explain how um, the layout of the program is. So the middle here is the 3D view. Now I do recommend to use a mouse, but if you don't, it, it should still be fine. So right click and when you drag around is rotate. Um, middle mouse button is pan around. And left click is to select things in your viewport. It's very, very similar to if you've, if you've done Unity, which I know a lot of you from our community have. If you haven't, it's very similar to most like 3D programs out there. Um, on the left here, you have your current objects in the scene. Again, it's very similar to something like Unity or other programs, 3D programs. You have a list of the objects, and then as you click them here, they also get selected in the 3D viewport and vice versa. Then over here on the right, you have what's called the inspector. So the inspector is actually shows you the properties of the item that you currently have selected. So if I have the camera selected, I have like some the field of view. If I have the light selected, I have like the light's intensity and etc. that I can change 
all kind of like in the inspector. So you know, again, if you're familiar with something like Unity, it's very, very similar. If you're not, uh, just think of this as like where you're actually changing the properties of, of each object. And then over here on the bottom left is your resources. So this is where your actual project files are going to live when we download stuff off the internet or when you maybe put in some 3D models that you want to work with or something like that, this is where they're going to go. Okay, so that's kind of like the gist of, of the program for now. We're going to get back to some of the, the basics in a little bit, how to move stuff around and etc. cetera. Uh, but the first thing that I want to show you is probably just, you know, one of the cooler effects that you can start playing with right away. So what we're going to do is here in the top left where you see add new, you're going to click add new and we're going to go to face effects. Okay. And then we're going to select face stretch. Okay. So I select face stretch. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put it on my webcam. So I'm stretching my own face. I'm actually going to get rid of this snap camera virtual device. We don't need it anymore. because so I'll be here on the right side of the screen. So now what you'll notice when you have when you created the face stretch effect, you're going to get this kind of map of a face here. Now, if you just kind of grab any part here, like, like the chin, for example, you can start dragging it and you'll see that it's actually warping my face in real time. See that? So what I want you to do is I want you to just kind of get a little creative with it. And again, you could you could zoom in and out. And I believe it's, uh, weird, I forgot how to pan, I changed that to, all right, never mind. In any case, shouldn't have to get that, that precise with this right now. So just kind of play around with the face stretching a little bit, warp your nose or you could do it subtle or you could do it really wacky. There's a uh, symmetrical mode is on currently. So that's why when I warp one side, it warps the other. If you turn off symmetrical mode, you should be able to just warp only one side if you really want to start looking funky. So there we go. Not bad. Hmm. So this is one of the effects, and it's probably one of the simpler ones. But um, a lot of people use it, and it's it, it could be it could be very effective. You could do a lot of a lot of fun stuff with it. Um, now I'm going to show you another one that we can do, and there is the face retouch. So if you just go to add new face retouch, this and if you so we can kind of disable this um, this face stretch. I just want to kind of show you where it is. So it all lies inside the camera right here and in effects. If you just click the little arrow right next to effect to open the, um, the hierarchy, you have face stretch here and you have retouch here. Um, make sure you have a Lens, Lens Studio installed on, on your machine if you want to follow along on the workshop. Okay. This isn't a Unity workshop, this one. <laughs> it's uh, right here. So it's basically the name of the Wi-Fi, just the words uh, flipped. Okay. So you notice right here, when you have the, the drop-down effects um, opened, you can actually turn on and off the face stretch. So if you just want to turn it off for now, and uh, so I can show you what retouch does. So retouch, as the name implies, it kind of gives you that Instagram kind of like um, face smoothing type of uh, effect that uh, you're kind of used to seeing on, on people's on people's profiles. And when they have lots of followers, they usually bump these settings way up, and you get real smooth. Like your skin is just wonderful. You see that when I turn it off. And on, you can see like gets gets rid of acne and you know, etc. It just kind of blurs it a little bit. Honestly, is what it does. So that's one of the common ones. It also sharpens your eyes and sharpens your teeth too. So it's like 
if you have yellow teeth, that's not a problem with, uh, with this effect. Uh, mm. <laughs> uh, so that's another like uh, simple face one. So those are just kind of like the, the fun little uh, face warping effects and face kind of retouching effects. Now, what if we wanted to kind of have a little bit of fun with this and start bringing in like some custom graphics, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up our favorite web browser and we can just go somewhere on Google and just type in like uh, sunglasses PNG. So we want like a nice uh, transparent kind of uh, sunglasses, some sort. Maybe like something like this, something a little bit more stylish. Make sure it's transparent. The way you can tell it's transparent is when you click the image and it has this little checkerboard pattern behind it. Uh, also, Google has been doing this thing a lot lately where it saves as a WebP file. So just make sure you right click save image as and then just you know save it on the desktop, something like that. So it doesn't save as a WebP file when you, when you drag it. That's also a, a new thing. So we have the sunglasses right here, just a picture. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the sunglasses and just drag it into the resources folder right here in the bottom left. Okay. So now it doesn't have to be sunglasses, but just for this demonstration, let's all try to get like a pair of sunglasses. And again, just make sure it's, it's a PNG with transparency on it. Um, if you want to find this exact one that I found, I just typed sunglasses PNG in Google Images and it was one of the first ones that showed up. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here where it says add new again. And this time I'm going to go to general. And actually, uh, yeah, face effects and face sprite. So again, add new, and it's like the third tab right here, face effects, face sprite. There we go. Now, you'll get this image again, and this is like uh, kind of like the 2D, the 2D work view, and you'll see that the image here is blank. And on the right side here, you'll get the settings for what's called a sprite. Now, if you don't know what a sprite is, a sprite is basically just a two-dimensional image that doesn't have any thickness or anything. It's just kind of like a, an image. Um, and in this instance, it's going to be our glasses. So in order, now you see how I have like the empty image just on my nose. You see that? So we want to replace that image with the glasses. And the way that we do that is see here where it says texture and it says default. So we're just going to drag our glasses into that slot. And there they are. But very tiny. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take this. Uh, you can already guess what I'm going to do. I'm going to scale it. Now you can see this is very intuitive. See? Don't I look fresh? <laughs> you just kind of use it. You see the little, um, if you click it, it'll have a little like drag boxes and stuff. Face effects. Face yes, yes. And then face sprite. Um. Now, you'll notice that this image, it's, uh, you know, sunglasses typically aren't, don't look so cartoony. Maybe they'll have a little bit of see-through in them or something mm -hmm. like that. Now, what you can do is you can actually uh, control the alpha here. You can make them a little bit transparent. If you want, so you can see the eyes through. The other thing that you can actually do is you can actually change the blend mode. And if some of you use Photoshop, you'll be familiar with some of these blend mode settings. So I can actually switch to something like multiply. And you can see it has, a, has an interesting effect. Overlay is pretty decent. Now you can see like if you're a graphic designer, for example, how easy it would be for you to kind of put this together and, and create a lens. Now if I also turn on my face stretch, my glasses don't fit anymore. So I'm going to make them bigger. Ah. See? 
beautiful face stretched, retouched. But it doesn't stretch the glasses, right? Nope, it doesn't. Yep, it's only a face stretch. So can you apply to that layer as well? The glass layer as well? Um, you wouldn't want to, and um, not not as a not. There's an advanced way you 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 can make it work, um, but it, they're on separate layers. So. That's just like a super, super simple example of how you can like just pull something in and um, y you can see how easily you can start kind of crafting stuff. Now I'll show you another one that you can kind of do with, with images and it's, it's really fun. So we can actually create face paint. So let's look at a face paint texture or something like that. Um, say like, I don't know, face, I don't know which face paint I don't want, like... Um, it doesn't even have to actually be a face. You can actually put just a regular texture on. Um, so, I don't know, let's say, uh, what would be an interesting thing to do? St. Patrick's Day. Right? Face paint. Wait, they have St. Patrick's Day face paint? Hmm. So, I guess like the four leaf clover. St. Patrick's Day. It's today, right? Um, I like this one's nice. Again, make sure it's transparent. So I'm just gonna just kind of put this clover over my face, and we'll see how it works. So again, I'm just gonna drag the file in. Four leaf clover. Now we're gonna play with this, see how we put it. So now we're gonna do another feature. So we're gonna go to add new face effects. And this time we're gonna do, uh, I believe it's face mask, just making sure. Yeah, face mask. And I'm gonna pull my four leaf clover into the default texture. And now the blend mode, I'll make it like something like, uh, I don't know, like, uh, let's say, Question. yes. Can you add it twice to have it on each lens, for example, like two leaves? Yeah, so the way you have to kind of have one texture that does that. Like, you, you can add twice, like you can make it, um, but you, you would have to kind of like position it around on, on the plane, like on the image. That would be the best way to do it. Like you kind of have a template of a face and then you kind of draw the, the pieces that you want overlaid. The most efficient way would be to have it all together in one texture, as one face paint texture. Yeah, kind of. And uh, see here, you can actually you can actually size the... Oh, one second. Right. Do that to me. You can actually size the the face. So say I. So you can do it like that, but again, I would recommend that you you kind of do individual stuff. So if I see I I'm, I selected everything, I made sure to turn off symmetrical mode, and then it allowed me to kind of stretch the face. And see, I could take the I don't know the four leaf clover, put it like on my cheek or something like that. See. And again, you can, the way that this mask works is say like, say you wanted to put something like lipstick, you can actually like paint like lipstick here and then you can try to, to move the lips around your texture so that the lipstick kind of fits. For example, people a lot of times they do makeup and stuff, you can actually do full makeup and stuff in inside Lens Studio as well. So I'm kind of happy with this lens. Um, what about the face stretch, though? I think the face stretch is nice. Maybe I'll just move the... Oops. Oh, God. Why does it do this? I'll just stay with... Oh, yeah. Um, just realized. So you don't need, need a pan. When you when you want to zoom in on a certain area, you just hold your mouse there, and it'll, it'll zoom to that area. So if you zoom here... See, if you, if you move the mouse down here, it'll zoom here. Oh, God, it's a little unwieldy. I wish it just had pan. Maybe I'm dumb and I just don't know how to pan. 
I tried everything. I feel like I used to be able to pan. In any case, you can you can just hold your mouse where you want to zoom, and you zoom in and out from there. Um, so I'm just gonna tweak this just a tiny bit. Maybe put it like uh, I don't know. Yeah. I think I'm gonna get rid of the face stretch for this one. Make my glasses a little smaller. So just kind of play around with it. There we go. So we have our first lens. It's very basic, nothing too crazy. We just kind of played around with it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just file and uh, save. So I'll save as. And you save your project. You know, I'm just going to call it, I don't know, St. Patrick's Day lens. And make a folder for it. And inside, St. Patrick's Day lens, something like that. Save. So now we have our saved project. Uh, I already have my phone synced. So I don't have this option here. But what happens is... Let me see if I can actually un unsync it. No. Uh, in any case, up here in the top right, uh, if you have Snapchat installed on your phone, you can sync your Snapchat app with your Lens Studio app. So you can preview this lens on your phone like right away without even publishing. It's just kind of like the, the debug view. So up here in the top right, you, you'll see something like pair, pair your phone with Lens Studio. If you click that, it'll open up a little snap code. It'll almost look like a QR code. And what you want to do then is you want to take your Snapchat app and you just want to point the camera at that QR code and just hold down on the camera and it'll just kind of like spin around and it'll find the QR code. Um, let me see if I actually, if I try to log out with Lens Studio, if I can... Would just let me. So, what happens if I log out? Hmm. No, it's still still paired. Yeah. Oh, disconnect. Found it. I think I found it. Still here. Oh, there it is. So I was able to disconnect, so you can see what this looks like. So that's what it looks like, right? So that's a snap code. Now you use your Snapchat app in the camera, and you just hold your finger down, like just in the middle of the screen of the camera, to scan the snap code. And your Snapchat app will kind of load, and then when it sees it, it'll say pair with Lens Studio, and you say pair. And then you wait a little bit, and it will show up in here inside Lens Studio. Say paired, ready to push. So then you'll click, you know, push, and it'll push it to your phone. So I'm just gonna come around real quick, just see if anyone's trying to get it to work. So everyone signing up for Snapchat. <laughs> this one. My man has Snapchat here. What about using this one? I'm making a video. What about using that? Is that the same? That's no. That's uh, a lot more basic. So yeah, so so basically, see if you wanted to do it like on his, for example. Oh, can I just do one? Yeah. So just reverse the camera, so you're looking at this side, right? And then look. Oh, let's turn on this. So so you just switch cameras. You look at it and you just hold down like this. There it is. Pair with lens to do that. And you click pair. And. It'll take a second, there you pair your device. And then your device is paired, and we'll, we'll be able to unpair and then you'll be able to pair it. Push lens to device. You put a GIF in already? Oh, you went through the GIFI. <laughs> yeah, no, the GIFI is great. We're going to do that. Lens, your lens has been set. There it is. Your lens is ready for preview. So he's popping up right there. There it is. And then this is for the face. Yeah. Okay. Oh wow. Easy peasy. 
So is it in the store, in the Snapchat app? Not yet. Uh, in so wait at the end, what happened? Yeah, push lens to the device. Uh -huh. Did you do that? No. Yeah, just so click that. And now you'll see a message here will pop up in a second. Is this is probably the Who's Whose phone did you pair it to? I Sometimes it bugs out a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you select every character, and you turn on turn on There's a quick there's a quick there's a quick there's a quick so it's very it's very simple. If if it's uh, if the pairing is sometimes giving you some issues, just keep trying. It usually ends up working. It might also be um, maybe your uh, cellular network maybe in the building isn't isn't too great. It could be a number of factors, but um, you can kind of see how how it works. So so again you just click here pair and you pull out your snapchat camera make sure you're on the back camera how do you unpair? oh how do you unpair it right here where it says pairing you click disconnect oh, okay. yeah and then again just wait a little bit and it'll it'll do it <laughs> so uh the last thing i wanted to show you kind of with the images is you might notice that there's a little giphy button right here so you can guess what that is there's a bunch of GIFs ready for you to use inside Lens Studio. So now let's say we don't want to do something on the face. Let's say we want to do something around, like on the frame of the camera. For that, you're going to use what's called a billboard. So you go to Add New, and this is in general, and Billboard. Now a billboard is kind of like an image that just overlays the whole phone basically that could be like a frame or it could be a logo or, or just something that's like not necessarily tracked to your face it's just an image that's just kind of like on top so let's say here this here's where we want to put like some giphy so i don't know i'm gonna put this like this love like rainbow thing right here and uh see it already has here add, add as billboard i guess i didn't need to add the billboard earlier but i'll just click add as billboard and I'm just going to remove my previous billboard. And again, I'm just going to show you where the billboards are. It's inside orthographic camera. So if you don't know the difference between a regular camera and an orthographic camera, um, orthographic just means it's there's no perspective. Usually you use orthographic cameras for, for 2D elements when there's no depth or, or dimension to them. They're just kind of like flat. So... This is where the sprites lie, and I'm just going to disable sprite one that I created. If you didn't create one earlier, you don't have to do that. And then my second sprite is this, and I'm just going to kind of make it smaller, and I'm going to put it like kind of like up here in a, in a corner, top, top right corner. And I'm going to get, I'm going to take this pin, and I'm just going to pin it to the top right corner. So it doesn't matter what the phone size will be, it'll always be pinned to the top right corner. And there's, uh, there's the lens. See? Uh, the pin is usually like right in the middle. See this little thing? So, does anyone have any questions so far? The what? Oh, uh, yeah, up here, the pair your device. No, no, no. Yeah. This, you mean? Yeah, this is where you switch between um, the camera and the preview people. And this drop down, so the image video mode and webcam mode, it's these two buttons. Uh, Giphy, right here. And where the resources are, there's a Giphy button.
Happy St. Patrick's Day. Right. <laughs> oh, it keeps the lens on while I'm drinking beer. It works. Technology has come far. So, now this is all fun and good. You know, this is what I would call like a static lens. It's there, it's doing its thing no matter what you do, right? Now, what I'm going to teach you how to do next is a very, very simple interaction. So, one of the best parts about Snapchat and Lens Studio in general is that there's all sorts of interactions that you can use to make lenses come alive. So, you can do things like raise your eyebrows, blow a kiss to the camera, um, smile. There's all sorts of different things you could do to kind of like activate certain functions inside Lens Studio. So we're going to do something for like mouth open, mouth closed, for example. Now I'm going to show you how this is done, right? So this is a very new feature in Lens Studio. Um, you're actually going to just Google behavior script Lens Studio. So just Google that and it's the first result right here you can see in the youtube videos here this is uh, one of my videos from one of the previous classes where i was the class was specifically just about behavior script uh, so if you want to get a little bit more in depth into that you can check that out but here it's the first link behavior script and it's going to have a little description you're just going to click download behavior script right here and it's just going to be a little zip file. You're going to take that zip file and put it on your desktop. And extract it. And you'll see inside is just one JavaScript file. That's all it is. It's just one simple script. But it's a very powerful script. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that script and drag it into our resources just as we did with the images. So we're going to drag that in. Now we have behavior script. So, now behavior script is a super, super neat um, little tool that, that Snap built for us creators. Uh, before, you had to code yourself in JavaScript if you wanted to, to create like some interactions. But Snap saw that there was a need to create kind of like an all-in-one simple script that just does almost everything you'd want it to do. Um, in this instance, we want to go for a mouth open trigger. We want something to happen when the mouth opens, right? So I'll show you how easy it is to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to add new right here. And I'm just going to create an empty object. So I'm just going to scroll and all the way to the top on general an empty object and I'm gonna rename it you don't have to but you know I'll just name it something like controller this is just to keep things clean um, again if you're familiar with something like unity you know sometimes you make an empty game object and you put a script on it so it does something um, and in this instance we're doing something very similar so we have our controller empty game object doesn't doesn't do anything not game object sorry too much unity uh, empty object uh, and then I'm just going to drag behavior script over here on the right where its inspector is. And it's going to have the script right there. Now, the script comes with a few little drop downs. The first one that I want you to look at is trigger. So what is our trigger? Now there's a bunch. There's a touch event, face event. Um, and then there's, you know, when the lens is turned on, update. Again, if you're familiar with something like Unity, that happens every frame. Late update is something that you do is the last thing on an update frame. So something like if you're doing physics or something like that. Yes, even physics is possible in Lens Studio. Some very advanced users have worked on that as well. Uh, when the front camera is activated, when the back camera is activated, when a certain animation ends, tween is... Um, if you're not familiar with what it means, tweening is basically just animating something from, from one point to another. It's just like kind of like, uh, it's just a word used for, yeah, basically it's, it's a script that, that 
just moves an object from point A to point B or moves it from one object to another looking at distance check and etc so most of these you, you really won't be using we want to use face event so face event event type mouth opened is already the default one we have mouth open mouth closed eyebrows raised eyebrows lowered brows returned to normal face found face lost kiss started kiss finished smile started smile finished so mouth opened is the one we're looking for okay and these we're going to leave for now options we're not going to touch now the response type that's the most important one so what do we want to happen when mouth is opened okay when mouth is opened i want to set enabled so i'm going to select set enabled and in here it's going to ask for what do you want to enable target so set enabled and the target will be here in my effects my face stretch so remember if mr face stretch this guy right so i want this to happen when i open my mouth okay so i'm going to take face stretch from here and i'm going to drag it into my target on the script like that now this works with any object any scene object inside lens studio and action is enabled see so it did it now you won't notice it because it won't um undo it because I, I didn't create one for mouth closed. So I'm going to basically do the same thing. I'm just going to right click copy on the script right here. Right click copy. Right click paste. Make a second version of the same script. Except this time on instead of mouth open it's mouth closed and disable. Now watch. Ah! <coughs> oh! right wow and you could do the same thing with like instead of that let's say i don't know i'm gonna go into giphy and i'm gonna say something like wow, wow. wow. kind of like the, the doge one i put a few more do they have another good one i think that let's go for the first ones all right this this wow and uh, I'm going to attach it to my face. Why not? <laughs> Whatever. I'll put it like right here. And uh, I'm going to go find that sprite. It's uh, wow is uh, this one right here. I'm just going to disable it for now. And I'm going to go back to my controller. And this time, instead of my face stretch being in the target, I'm going to put that sprite, that wow sprite. And now it's like, wow. Wow. See? It's that easy. So that's a very, very simple interaction on mouth open, for example. Um, and now you can do as many of these as you want you can just keep using the behavior script I know it might be a little messy right now especially if you have a lot of chained behaviors believe me I've done a lens with like 20 <laughs> behavior scripts on, on, on a few objects um, but it's all this is very new and it's constantly evolving and features are always being added new things um so it'll all get a lot more streamlined as as more and more features come out uh wow 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 <laughs> And then uh, I can do like a, a, a question mark one. And uh, I'm going to add that to my face too. I'm going to put it like on the top of my head. And I'll get rid of this uh, billboard. This. Uh... Yeah, it's not like. Yeah, like the jerk, this jerk. 
get rid of this for now. I'm gonna do this one for on uh, on eyebrow raise. So I'm just gonna copy. Paste. And I'm gonna scroll down, and this one I'm gonna do on on brow raised. It can get a little confusing remembering which is which. You should probably start naming these if you if you do want to do like a serious project. <laughs> right now we're just kind of like messing around. Uh, so it's this one I believe. On brows raised, set enabled. On brows lower. On brows return to normal. Uh, disable. So, hmm, hmm, yeah. Wait, wait. Sometimes the browse is not that great. Yeah, I don't know why the browse is simple, right? Now, so far we've we've done a decent amount here. We've created a, a very simple lens, uh, but we've only been using 2D graphics, and it's it already is is, is pretty fun. I mean, people can can have fun with this. They can put it on their on their Snapchat app, share it. Um, so I'll show you like how easy it is to actually publish this onto the Snapchat platform. You're gonna click here where it says Publish Lens. And you're going to be kind of shown with the project information here. Now, our lens is too big. So the maximum allowed size is 4 megabytes. Now, I know that doesn't sound like a lot. But the reason why it's 4 megabytes is because Snapchat wants people to download lenses effortlessly. And they don't want people to be waiting, especially if they're on a mobile network, like, you know, for a lens to download. These are supposed to be very quick and simple experiences for people to very easily share and, and with each other. Um, the limit will probably increase at some point in the future, but for now, it's like a technical slash artistic limitation that you know you have to work within those constraints. So things have to be very efficient. So maybe I'll get rid of um, you know the question mark for now. I think the question mark is the one that they put it over the edge. Um, See. Yep. It's actually not the question mark. I think it's the glasses are just huge. No. Oh, the four leaf clover. Yeah, the four leaf clover is is uh freaking two megabytes. Two by itself. It's a big one. That's why. It's not actually. I don't know why. Very inefficient PNG. Actually, no, no, no. The RAM usage is that much. Well, it's probably the... Oh, it's this uh, Gay Pride love sticker. Wait, wait, wait. It doesn't say. Let's just delete it for now. Yeah, it's that, that one set me over the edge. So now, yeah, like, you know, 3.2 megabytes is fine. Um, choose icon, wants you to choose an icon. Let's say I'll put the four leaf clover as my icon. You should size it. Um, right now we're just kind of like playing around so it doesn't really matter, but in Photoshop, you know, or your favorite, you know, image editor of choice, bring your icon in and size it usually a little bit bigger than, you know, what, you know, give it some empty room. Cause uh, the, all the icons in Snapchat are little circles. So you want to give it some room around the, the edges of the circle. Um, so you save the icon, you name your lens, Saint. Patrick's Day, I guess. Can't put apostrophes. That's fine. Lens works on front camera. Hint, uh, open your mouth. Open your mouth. So that's it. And I'm going to click apply. And then publish my lens. Now it's going to take you to this window. You log into your Snapchat account.
Yep. Yep. Oh my god. Oh my god. Come on, can't be another one. <laughs> right? <laughs> I think I am, yeah. Watch, I got my password wrong, then I gotta do it again. No. Okay. Connect to Lens Studio. Lens Studio would like to access your Snapchat account. Submit lenses that you create to Snapchat. Continue. And then continue. And then it's gonna ask you is this a sponsored lens or a community lens? So I'm just gonna really quickly explain what the difference is. Um, sponsored lens is when you're, let's say, building a lens for a client or you're building a lens that you want to promote on what's called the, the Snap for Business platform. And that's very similar to like something like Facebook ads. You create a lens and you can do ad buys. You can target people based on their age, their location, their interests, and make the lens pop up in their feed if they match those interests and you pay per view or you know something like that. And the community lens is what we're gonna be going for. It's just basically, you can send people a link, you can put it up on your own Snapchat account, and you know you can get the snap code. So if I just click community lens here, and there it is, it wants usually a lens preview, it doesn't need one. Uh, Snapchat always recommends that you create previews for your lenses by just recording a little video of the lens itself. The videos have to be nine by 16, so that's you know 16 by nine, but portrait mode. And uh, yeah. All you have to do is just click submit and it'll do its thing. It'll be in review. Usually they're really fast with reviewing. Um, I sometimes get things approved within minutes, sometimes within an hour. Um, rarely longer than that. Um, depends. I've had uh, some lenses that I've done for clients that are, you know, maybe have to go through some copyright checks for music and stuff. But for the most part, um, it's very very fast and then what happens is you're gonna get a link in your email and it's gonna say your lens is ready and uh, it's gonna give you one of these it's gonna give you a snap code and that snap code you can actually you can download the snap code that you can get the actual PNG file see you can get the original PNG file or an SVG file so you can actually print these you know and you can make them as big as you want or as small as you want you can put them on your business card and then anyone with their snapchat app can scan this and get your lens so that's one way of distributing them another way is you'll get a link and anyone that clicks the link the link will open up their snapchat app and boom it's there and they have it for 48 hours it's in their snapchat account they can play with it if they want it more they can just click the link again and unlock it for another 48 hours so that's how it works um, here you have some metrics. I have uh, my most popular lens is, uh, it, I think it's the Digital Surfer. No, it's 20, 235,000 views. A demonic, yeah, this one's almost at half, half a million. Um, so the lenses have a real potential to, to get viral. Um, there's a Reddit for, for custom Snapchat lenses. If you make one and you put it up, people love checking them out there and sharing them and stuff. Um, No! Did it break? I think I, uh... Is there a price for the most popular lens? Is there a what? Price. Price? Yeah. So, uh, there isn't really, like, a prize per se right now. Um, there has been, like, a hackathon for it, but um, it was only for what are called official lens creators. So I'm an official lens creator. Um, I've been working with, with their platform since it got started, pretty much. They're always going to be having new waves of lens creators. They're going to be accepting into the programs. So what I would recommend for you as beginners, play with, this, with the program, create lenses, put them up on your account, share them. Um, if you get noticed, they'll reach out to you and they'll ask you to join the, the official lens creator program. Um, So, so the that's called the lens carousel. 
that the, when you first open up the Snapchat app. So the way that it works is um, the carousel itself is usually kind of like the highest end lenses. It's it's kind of rare for like a community lens to make it on a carousel all by itself unless it's maybe relevant to something that's going on like Halloween or something like that. So they post like challenges. They say you'll create like a Halloween lens or maybe they'll release a new feature in Lens Studio and they'll say, you know, we want people to create lenses with this new feature because they want to showcase it and um, then maybe it'll show up on there. The other way is... Um, you can do the, the snap for business with like an ad buy and your lens can technically pop up like I've seen lenses were popping up for um, during the World Cup for example so it all kind of there, there's a few different ways you can get yourself on a carousel and um, they're still working on more ways of, of basically getting creators individual creators into the carousel of just regular users Well, you, you wouldn't necessarily need to pay to get your lens out there. Like, I'll give you an example. Like, so there's a template on here, for example. I'll show you right now. So if I go to new project from template, um, yeah, marker, let's say marker, just marker. So they have, uh, this is a, also a fairly recent feature they released. So this is, if you're familiar with AR and like Vuforia, this is basically that. But, and I'm going to actually click on, um, on image here and I'm just going to show you. Strange. Um, just see something. Oh, okay, they got this. I see what's going on. I opened the wrong template. Hmm? The carousel is updated like seasonal, whatever. So yeah, the carousel is it's it's like seasonal and, and other ways. Um there is also the thing you have to keep in mind to the carousel you can't like put that much stuff in there so they're picky about what what gets on there but all the lenses that you like let p your users unlock it stays in their carousel for 48 hours so it's down there yeah so No, there's there's plenty of free ones. Like if you just go all the there's a discover there and you can discover all the community lenses. My lenses are on there, other users' lenses. It's it yeah, there's tons. So so here's an example of marker based and it, you since you were mentioning like for example what's the payoff like for something like a client. So this is a this is a movie poster. You see how it starts out? It's just a poster on a wall that gets activated in AR in Snapchat. So What's cool about this is like say you have a client and um, they have a, a restaurant menu. You can activate the restaurant menu using like Snapchat. So you can tell people just scan this with your Snapchat app and boom and you know the food comes out of the, the menu. Just, just you know an idea. Um, you can sell your services as a lens creator. You don't necessarily need to promote your lenses using Snap for, for business as, as, a, as a starting out. That's like later on, um, if you're trying to do a very specific campaign, maybe you work with a company that has a marketing budget and they want to promote, you know, a song or something like that, and then they'll, they'll put the money into it. But you as a lens creator, there's tons of ways you can get your, your work out there for people to try it and share it, and etc. The best part about it is if someone, for example, uses your lens, on Snapchat, let's say they post it to their story. Um, let's say that person has 500 followers. Every follower that saw their story also sees the lens they're using 
in that story and that lens is your lens and they can unlock that so that person now has 500 followers that saw your lens that potentially unlocked it and one of those people might have you know a few hundred followers and they'll use your lens and record a video and then it can, has potential to just kind of spread like wildfire like that so it's a great way to you know you can brand it you can put your own logo on it you know all sorts of stuff like that stuff that people maybe would want to google or etc so there's a it, think of it again it's just another uh it's just another tool in your tool belt like lens studio isn't that all end all be all but it's definitely like one of the most powerful augmented reality creation platforms right now and this was just the basics that i showed you it goes it goes far deeper it goes into 3d you can put 3d objects in uh you can put 3d animations in you, i just gave you a little glimpse of markers for example and then there's also there's world lenses um which are i'm just gonna show you like let's say um animated object so I put this on uh, world so there's actually you can actually create AR and uh, let's see where's the world so you can actually create AR and put it like on the back camera so it's it's full AR and it's it's powered by AR core and AR kit so if you're on iOS and you're using Snapchat, you're going to have AR kit powered AR. If you're on Android, you're going to be having AR core powered AR in Snapchat. So anything that you put, and this is called the world lens, you can see you could drag it around, you know, and if yeah, I had like touch right now, I'd be able to scale it up and down and stuff. So you could put it on surfaces. You could put it on your floor and a table. And now you can imagine you have like your friend in the shot and he's dancing or she's dancing. And you can record a video of them dancing next to this character, for example. That's kind of how the platform works. It's very playful. Uh, it's not like when you're doing AR in something like Unity, let's say, you got to publish on the App Store. You got to get people to find your app. There's a whole bunch of steps that people have to take, whereas this is a platform people are already using constantly. And um, Snapchat was the first one, really, to start with the, the dog ears and, and the, the dancing hot dog. And they kind of pioneered this social AR and they're kind of pushing it even even further and they're constantly like innovating in the space um, and you know before you know it people are going to be playing games with each other in AR and sharing stuff and uh, but it all will kind of come down to tools like this and this tool is it still in its infancy it's very powerful and robust uh, but, you know, it hasn't even been like a full two years, I think, since it got released to the public. So there's still a lot more room for it to grow. They're constantly adding more and more example projects, templates. Um, their online resources are great. There's a big community of people um, that are always working on it. There's forums. Uh, more and more people are putting up YouTube videos. I put up YouTube videos. This is going to be on YouTube later. Um, so, yeah, in any case, like, again... It's another tool in your tool belt, you know, if you already do maybe 3D, maybe you do graphic design, maybe you just do sound, you know, you could put sounds in this as well. So, I'll show you real quick. Let's say, i just make something real quick. Right, let's just start from a cube one. I'll just make something simple like a table. I gotta spend that much time on it. Okay. So. Hmm. Uh, I don't work at Snapchat, but I'm what's called an official lens creator. And my company is is a Snap Creative partner, so we do like uh, we do lenses for clients and brands and, and that kind of stuff. So you know the music industry really loves it. Um, I've done some lenses for some apps, uh, but mostly we've been doing a lot of stuff with uh, with music labels and and uh, when an artist releases a single or something like that. They want like to have uh, one of their lenses up, for example. 
Yeah, um, I, well, I just did a, a marshmallow lens recently, um, and uh, I've done for stuff for Netsky, um, Lil Wayne. Um, there's a few other like uh, we're still in talks with a few of them. Again, this is also very new to them as well, so they're still like figuring out how they're gonna use it and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's 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 all just kind of just kind of starting. We just became a, a partner just maybe like three months ago or something like that. So here's my table FBX file. You just drag the FBX file in, click import, and there it is. Hmm? Yep, just like Unity or something like that. And the texture, you know, let's just get it like a wood texture. Whatever, uh, freaking watermarks everywhere. So, Blender, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna get rid of this. And there's my table. Oh. Choose material, I just made a material. Oh, oops, 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 oops. Nice. <laughs> so I'm gonna put this. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, on their site, they have a lot of resources as well. Um, YouTube is a great place to also check stuff out. Uh, there's a, like I said, there's a Reddit as well. Uh, so yeah, just check it out. Just you know, look up Lens Studio for beginners or something like that. And um, I have a couple of videos also from from previous workshops that we've done um, that goes goes into uh, some of the other stuff. But you can see it's it's again, it's a very powerful 3D program. Um, it does a lot. It doesn't do everything, obviously, but it, it, it does like a sometimes even more than you'd expect. Um, I have one more sure. <laughs> Sorry. So the animation of the character, uh, how how uh, how do you handle that? Like how you bring it already animated? Yeah, you bring it in animated from your program, and then there's a there's a clip maker here where you can cut up the timeline. On the on the animation, you can actually cut and then and then take like let's say you put all your animations into one timeline, you can cut that timeline and then you can actually control the animations like let's say on open mouth jump or something like that. So you could do that kind of stuff as well. You could do it on behaviors. You could do it on Snapchat controls. You can have full click controls in it. So you can actually click buttons and stuff as well. So there's you can actually make buttons. Um, there's a there's a good template in here called uh, uh, there's like an interactive soundboard. Yeah. Can you give them an iPod? Technically, kind of. So here's a soundboard, and then uh, see you click these. Now you can't hear anything because uh, we're probably like muted. The what? Meow. <laughs> <laughs> Is that recording from the desktop? It's not. So what file was the editing? It's uh, it's called soundboard. Yeah. So now, so the the video can also hear. Meow. 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 <laughs> So you can very easily go in here, change the cats, change the sounds, and you got a soundboard as a lens. This is an example. FBX works. FBX works, yeah. Um, it's in uh, it's in the templates, so you can either you can usually do a new project from template, or you know if you just kind of like close it, you know, open up the all the the browser. So I'll just show you in the browser, so you can see where they are. 
I'm just going to close Lens Studio. I'm going to open it again. Okay. Yeah. And uh, they should all be in here. So that's the soundboard. Uh, huh. If you click like 2D. Yeah. I don't know why it wasn't showing up in all. Did I just miss it? Oh, yeah. Soundboard's all the way at the bottom. There's just one called Soundboard. It's right there. Um, this one's really cool. This one's like a hole in the ground type thing with occlusion. See that? So there's an occlusion material. You see that? It's an occluder. And anything that's behind the occluder doesn't get drawn. You see? That's what it actually looks like. It's just an inside out hole. And when you put the occluder around it, it looks like an actual hole in the ground. So you can actually walk up and, and you know, like if you were there with your own camera, and that, that's what it would look like. There's a lot of fun stuff you can do with it. Um, there's portals you can walk through, like a doorway. And you walk in, and then you look back, and you're like, you know, you're in the world, and you walk back out, and there's just a doorway. I've seen one of those. Do they have the portal? Yeah, they do actually. It was a van Gogh in a regular Yeah. Yeah, I made one a long time ago. Um, in in this actually, before they made it a template. Then later they made it a template, but not not my thing. Another one, yeah, portal right here. So this one's actually super interactive. You walk in, there's this whole city thing. You know, I, I don't know if it'll actually do it here, but you walk in and there's a button that you can actually once you're in the portal, you can actually click the button and then something happens. I forget what, but something happens. Yeah, you would probably, if you wanted to, you, you pair it with your phone and, and you could try this one. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of stuff you can do with it. Um, yeah, it's, it's a very hev heavily, like, it, a lot. I don't have the statistics off the top of my head here, but um, something like more than half of the users hundreds of millions use the AR like a lot so they they are on snapchat so they can use the filters so they could so they can share that kind of stuff so um, they're they're definitely heavily investing into AR and, and it's it's only getting better and better it is it's, it's, it's AR yeah the marker thing that I just showed you very very recent very new um, so that's that feature just came out recently and they're they already just announced some some features that I can't disclose right now, but they're going to be out within a few weeks, and they're just even more exciting. So they're constantly, constantly adding new stuff. Um, Is there anything else that's really new that you're really excited about? Um, snap camera, which is what I showed like in the in the beginning. That's probably what I'm the most excited about. This is again maybe two three months since it just came out. And you know, it's basically it takes your regular camera, and you can put any Snapchat lens you want on it, and then it outputs it as a virtual camera device. You can do Google Hangouts with this. You can do Skype with with this on. Like you can show up to Skype wearing this. And like, yeah, I was just having like a video chat. Um, like, what was it? it was yesterday? Yeah, and. Uh, I showed like I came on wearing snap camera and then like <laughs> the, the other guy on the call also like like hopped onto snap camera and then like we were just like it just made the video chat so much more like fun than, than it usually is um, could be a little distracting too but uh, yeah you can video chat with is one cool thing but um, to me the the most exciting things is um, the potential for streamers and uh, twitch streamers using this like on stream and it's one of the things that, that we're looking at as, as a company to kind of start creating lenses for streamers. So we're already doing stuff for music artists. And uh, I feel like this, with Snap Camera, uh, I'd say that's probably like 
got me the most excited right now what they released and they just kind of did it out of the blue no one was expecting it and just one day like oh we just released snap camera all your lenses now work on your webcam and everyone's like oh wow well that's cool No. So Facebook has its own, it's called Spark AR. So it's a, it's a different competing platform. Um, they don't like, they don't cross over. You have to basically redo the work in, in the other platform. Yeah. Yep. It's kind of like Unreal Engine and Unity. Not like exactly, but it's, you know, they don't, you can't really import a Unity project into Unreal. Um, so yeah, like I said, uh, as you can see, very, very easy to follow along. Uh, it's it's not a complicated software at all. Again, if you missed anything or any part of it, you know it's going to be up on our YouTube channel. You just go on YouTube and just oh, YouTube and just look up Any World Community. That's us right there. We already have two Lens Studio tutorials up there, so you know we're going to have it up here, and uh, you'll be able to check it out. Which one? This one? This one? Yeah, just like similar to this one, just kind of different a little bit. I went into some more 3D there, how to download a 3D model off of a, of a blend swap and stuff. So they're all slightly different. Um, I come in with somewhat of a, of, a, of a lesson plan usually into these, but I mostly just kind of wing it, and each time it's, it's kind of different. I try to show something something different each time, even though, it's again, it's another beginner one. Um, and uh, I'm always constantly learning on the platform, and uh, I'm going to be showing more as, as I learn more how the platform works, and as the more new features come out, I'm going to be playing with them and making tutorials about it and stuff. And, uh, yeah, so definitely stay, stay tuned for that and uh, any other interesting stuff we got going on. I know... Uh, some of you are interested in the in the Blender class. I just showed a little bit of Blender earlier, so uh, a lot of people are asking about doing a Blender class, and Justin's like nodding, like yes, <laughs> please. <laughs> so uh, we're gonna have one of those coming up in about a month. So it's gonna be only only 3D modeling. So that's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm gonna try to do that also in a very simple and approachable way. If you wanna learn right now, we have a Blender for Beginners class up here, right here which was from the previous one we did. That one was geared more towards Unity. Uh, but again, it's just on any real community, Blender for beginners. It's like a very simple... Um, uh, it had a lot of interruptions, that video. It was like kind of like... Uh, I kept getting up and explaining stuff to people. So if you if you don't mind that, like if you skip through it, you know, it, it won't be as, as annoying. Uh, but yeah, that, I guess, that concludes that. Any other final questions and stuff? Um, I'll still be, you know, we still got like another 30 minutes, but, um, which one, uh, my, my browser or the snap camera, the, this is another program. Yeah. It's called the snap camera. So yeah, you could just download that. Um, it just Google snap camera. I'm sorry. Yep. That's it. Mm -hmm. Skype, yeah, it shows up as a, as a webcam, as a webcam device, a virtual webcam device. You can see it's actually layering two lenses. The lens we made earlier, it's layering it on top of the the snap camera. So it's like a lens inception. Behavior script? So you just drag it onto some object anywhere. I just created an empty an empty object to drag it on. See, I, I select the empty object and I just drag it on here. And then this controls some something else. You don't need to put it on an empty object. You could put it, you know, even on the camera if you want, I think, you know. It'll work. You could put it on anything. Just as long as it's in the world and it's 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 doing something, then the behavior will actually do something. 
Hmm? Yeah, yeah, that one. It's it's yeah, that one's only about a uh, behavior script. So it goes it goes in depth into that. Um, it's very similar to what we just talked about here a moment ago. Sure. So there's nothing with hands yet. It's the ones that I listed out. So the face events, for now it's just face events. And then there's other events like when the camera changed. Like if you switch camera from front to back. Or, you know, if a face came into view. Like if the face left the camera and a face came back in, that's another trigger. But they're going to be adding more triggers. Yeah. But for now, those are the triggers. Currently, it's face. And then there's, there's also touch events. You can... You can do, you can touch, like like you saw the buttons on the soundboard. Yeah. You can technically have buttons that you can touch and then those do something, like play a sound or something like that. Yep. Did the button trigger some random thing like a face event? Well, you, you can't make someone have a face event. I mean, have something show up. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, if it's just an animation, you just turn it on and off. If once it's off, then you press a button, and yeah, like an eye pop out or something. Yeah, yeah, you can. It's a little bit more complex, but yeah, you could technically. Yeah, you could. You could. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. So this will be up on YouTube in a bit.